The biggest draft steals from the 2024 NFL Draft is the name of today's video or pod if you're listening on Apple or Spotify, and we are starting with the Colts selection of receiver A.D. Mitchell. A.D. was my wide receiver 5 entering the draft. I had him in the top 25 of the class in terms of overall players, and the Colts selected him near the end of the second round. Now, there is a lot to like with AD's game. I thought his game compared very favorably to George Pickens, and I don't like this selection just because AD Mitchell is a good football player. I mean, that's obviously a prerequisite to be a draft steal, but there's several reasons why I like the selection. First off, AD is 6'2", and he ran a 4'3", 4'40". Now, he's a lot more than just a height, weight, speed guy, but another reason as to why I like the selection is the Colts have really done a good job in terms of building their receiver room. Obviously, Michael Pittman has some limitations in the speed department. He's not slow, of course, but he's not as fast as A.D. Mitchell, and he's nowhere close to being that fast. But that's fine because Michael Pittman is a very, very good receiver, and now we have a duo of Pittman and Mitchell and really a trio with Josh Downs as well who quietly had a good rookie year. Obviously when a guy like Puka Nakua has the year he had and, and when CJ Stroud had the year he had, you're naturally not going to be talked about kind of like Downs wasn't for most of the year, at least you know to the level he should have been. But this also frees up the run game by having a guy like A.D. Mitchell who is a freak athlete. I mean, A.D. tested 94th percentile 40 as he ran a 4 3 4. He had a 98th percentile broad jump. And just in terms of how the defenses are going to have to respect AD's speed at all times, I mean, guys, the Colts also have a really dominant offensive line uh, led on the left side by Bernard Ryman and, of course, Quentin Nelson. And. Jonathan Taylor didn't have the year he wanted to last year. It was hampered by injury, and obviously, you know, Anthony Richardson missed most of the year, but if you have a, you know, five offensive weapons, if you have a set of five offensive weapons in Anthony Richardson, Jonathan Taylor, of course, A.D. Mitchell, Michael Pittman, and Josh Downs, coached by Shane Steichen along with a good offensive line, I have said this on, on streams before, but... The Colts, to me, are one of the biggest sleepers heading into the 2024 season. And I would have been fine with the Colts taking AD at pick 15. I was, like I said, a huge, huge AD Mitchell fan, but they drafted Latu Latu at pick 15. So for Indy to be able to walk out of this draft with both Latu and AD Mitchell, to me, was some of the best drafting you'll find. And guys, the, the sheer vertical threat of Mitchell at all times, combined with Anthony Richardson's you know ability to throw the ball 70, 75 yards on any given snap, also combined with the fact that they can downhill run with whether it's Anthony Richardson, who is the size of a tight end, or of course, Jonathan Taylor, who is one of the best running backs in the NFL. Again, coached by Shane Steichen, who I think is a very good offensive mind. Uh, this, this team is going to be dangerous in 2024, and A.D. Mitchell, to me, will prove to be one of the biggest deals from this class. Next up is the Raiders selection of Jackson Powers Johnson, who was announced as a guard despite playing center during his time with Oregon, and there are several reasons as to why I like this pick. They got him in the middle of the second round, and Jackson, to me, was a first-round caliber prospect, and... If you don't think my word is good enough on, on, on how good of a player Jackson is, an NFC scouting director, of course, it's anonymous. Nobody is going to come out and say, you know, where they are from or, you know, hey, we're from this team. We think this is how he is. But uh, from an NFC scouting director, he's tough, smart, and strong. I just don't overthink it with centers. When you get those elements, you usually have a starter. Now, with Jackson, he's six foot three, 330, did 30 reps on the bench. He only allowed one pressure on 497 pass blocking snaps during his during his final season with the Ducks in 2023. And I think this is a classic case of a guy that three or four years from now, there's going to be teams that wish they took him in the first round. Now, unfortunately, the reality of the draft is there's going to be teams that took draft busts in the first round this year. It happens every year, and unfortunately, we will see that. I don't want to be the, the bearer of bad news, and I'm not singling any picks out in particular when I say that, but there will be teams that wish they didn't overthink this and that wish they, they took Jackson with their first round pick despite him falling to the middle of the second round. He is a tone setter. He is a guy that when you get off the bus, he is a guy that's going to 
install a little bit of intimidation in terms of opposing teams. You know, he's the guy that, the big guy that once you walk off the bus, you know, we're going to win this road game. Now, for the Raiders and, and the Chargers specifically, I, I liked what their draft plan was. It was, you know, to get good, strong football players. And obviously they know who they have to beat in terms of, you know, if they want to move forward in the postseason or get to the postseason in either case. They have to beat 15 in red. And a good way of doing that, or at least attempting to do that, is to keep him off the field as long as they can within division play. And if you can have Jackson Powers Johnson, you know, lead your offensive line along with Colton Miller, by the way, for the next few years, I think the Raiders are in good hands. Uh, Jackson has really, really heavy hands. I don't think he's going to get beat by power a lot at the NFL level. Sure, he might have a few reps where he gets, you know, pushed back a little bit by an interior defensive lineman, but Jackson is... He's very good for, for how young he is, and for the Raiders to get him in the middle of the second round with already taking Brock Bowers in the first round, I thought the Raiders had a really good draft, and uh, Jackson Powers Johnson is definitely one of the biggest steals from this class. He's a tone setter, he's an ass kicker, and uh, the Raiders are definitely trying to rebrand themselves, you know, the old Oakland Raiders, like how they were way back in the day. Uh, you can tell by Antonio Pierce's first draft class that... Uh, this is what they're going to try to do moving forward, and I absolutely love the Powers Johnson selection, and I like the future of the Las Vegas Raiders. For the next draft steal, we are heading to the end of the third round to discuss Jalen McMillan to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, for the Washington Huskies and their fans and even prospects or high school recruits rather that are going to Washington next year, it was a very big weekend. They had multiple first round picks. Uh, they had not just Roma Dunze, but Michael Penix, Troy Fatanu, uh, of course, Jalen Polk getting selected at the top of the second round. It was a big weekend for the Huskies. And McMillan kind of got lost in the shuffle because of Rome, because of Michael, because of, of Jalen Polk. But I really like this pick for Tampa for a few reasons. Whenever you're in the third, fourth round, you know, you're looking at guys that could hopefully be starters. And especially in the third round at times, you'll see teams draft a year ahead to try and replace a position. And that's exactly what this is. Uh, Chris Godwin is entering the final year of his contract and they just paid Mike Evans. Granted, it was just a two-year deal, but I think the selection of McMillan effectively signals that Chris Godwin's final year as a buck will be in 2024. Now, Chris himself was a third round pick back in 2017 coming out of Penn State, and McMillan size-wise compares very favorably to Godwin. Uh, McMillan is 6'1", 197, ran a 4'4", 740, and McMillan actually has 87th percentile hand size, so you're never going to have to worry about whether his hands are, are big enough to catch passes or anything like that, like you sometimes worry with other receivers. But another reason why I like this pick is during Chris's rookie year back in 2017, he himself... I mean, I don't want to say only because he was a third round pick, but he had 34 receptions for 525 yards. Now, I think especially in a 17 game season that Jalen McMillan can, I think he can average two receptions per game and I think he can get four or 500 yards as a rookie and then take over next year. Now, will Jalen have the success long term that Chris Godwin has? I, I don't know because, you know, Chris is quietly working on three straight 1,000 yard years, but that's to be determined. But I thought in terms of the long term aspect, I really liked this pick for the Bucks. And to be honest, I really liked what the Bucks did this draft. Obviously, you know, you hear a lot of the talk about the Chargers having a good draft. You hear a lot of talk about the Steelers having a good draft, and, and we'll get to those teams. But I really thought the Bucks had one of the better drafts. And there's not a lot of people talking about what the Bucks did in this draft class. But ultimately, Ultimately, I thought Jalen McMillan was one of the bigger steals, and Baker even threw for 4,000 yards and 28 touchdowns last year, both of which were career highs, and unless he completely falls off a cliff this year in terms of production, I would be surprised if he doesn't have a very similar year in 2024. So, Jalen McMillan won't be a 1,000-yard receiver in year one, but he may be in year two. Remember, this class was loaded as hell at the receiver position, and in 2025, Mike Evans and Jalen McMillan will be a solid receiving duo.
And we are staying in the third round for the next draft steal, late third round, granted, but it's Cam Kitchens going to the Rams. Now, there were a lot of people that were out on Cam Kitchens as a prospect, due in large part to a slow 40, as he ran a 4.6540 to be exact, but I like the landing spot for Kitchens, and especially with where he was drafted. Now, if we were talking about Cam as a top 40 pick, it would probably be a little bit different of a situation, but... With Cam, there is a lot of potential here. He led the ACC in interceptions in not just one, but back-to-back -back years. And when you are a ball hawk and a ball magnet like that, you don't accidentally lead one of the best conferences in college football and interceptions in back-to-back -back years. He's also a willing tackler. He's not shy. Uh, you don't play in Miami and be shy from contact, and Kitchens has obviously proven that. But another reason why I like this pick so much and, and why I think it's a big sleeper is with what the Rams did to also address the defensive line and the pass rush in the post-Aaron Donald era. Now, admittedly, I wasn't the biggest fan of trading a future second for defensive lineman Braden Fisk, in addition to giving up a current second, and I addressed that in the draft grades video, which will be linked at the end of this if you're interested in watching, but I do think that Braden Fisk and Jared Verse will be key contributors in year one, and that when you have a pass rush be able to get home with Verse, with Fisk, with Kobe Turner, and with Byron Young, Cam doesn't need to be able to run a, a, a 4 2 40 to be able to hang back there when quarterbacks, more often than not, are not going to have that long to throw in the pocket to begin with. Uh, he's going to be a ball hawk at the next level, and it wouldn't surprise me at all if Kitchens led all rookies in interceptions as in 2024. I like him a lot, and I also think he is a sleeper to win Defensive Rookie of the Year. Will he, of course, is a completely different discussion, but I think Kitchens was one of the better value picks, especially with where he was selected. Like we said, he's not a top 40 pick, and when you have a very intelligent player that sticks around the ball, that is also a solid tackler in a safety class where there were not a lot of willing tacklers, and I'm not going to... I'm not going to discuss anyone in particular. You can guess and look up who those players are because I don't want to, you know, I don't want to shit on anyone's game per se. But Kitchens is a great value pick at 99. He's intelligent. He's a ball hawk. And I think the Rams definitely have one of the bigger draft steals. And like we said, whenever you talk about defenses collectively playing as a unit, Kitchens will be a direct beneficiary of the Rams' solid pass rush. One of my favorite draft steals was Mo Camara going to the Dolphins in the late part of the fifth round. They got him at 158th overall, and for reference on my personal big board, I had him at 83. And when you can have a plus 75 spot difference that late in the draft, I am all for that selection, whether it was the Dolphins, whether it was even a team that didn't need pass rush. I absolutely love this pick for Miami. Uh, Mo is 6'1", 250, ran a sub 4, 640, and did 23 reps on the bench. Now, there was a reason Mo was a late fifth round pick. Obviously, being 6'1", and 250 as an edge rusher is not great size. And there were also times at Colorado State where Mo was a little heavier on the speed to power than you would have liked. But what I will say positively about Mo is there are four other players that he can learn from as a rookie and as a second year player that, well, three that have had success and then the other fourth is their first round pick and chop Robinson. But the other three players that have had success in the league are Jalen Phillips, Bradley Chubb, and Shaq Barrett. And for Miami to have five players, five edge players to be able to get after the quarterback entering the season, to me, is huge. And then obviously every team dealt with injuries in 2023 and every team will deal with injuries in 2024. Unfortunately, that's a part of the game. But when you can have this many options in the AFC, and of course, when you have Josh Allen and now Drake May in your division, or like Patrick Mahomes, who Miami lost to in the postseason last year, you have to be able to get after the quarterback. You can have Mo Kamara in as a pass rush specialist on third down. And another reason why I like the Mo Kamara selection is it takes a little bit of pressure off of Chop Robinson, their first round pick early on, because I wasn't the biggest fan of the Chop Robinson selection, mainly because of who they took him over on the offensive line, like Graham Barton, for example. But 
I also think, you know, having two rookie edge rushers, you know, where they can learn from and they can be sponges from both Jalen and Bradley early on. Um, I like the potential of each player and I especially like the potential for Mo Camara as a late fifth round pick to learn from those guys and to be a, you know, really a, just a NASCAR specialist package, you know, just a speed guy or a guy that can just come in and just get after the quarterback on third down and not have to worry about stopping the run or, you know, second and one, hey, we need to be able to, to plug this gap or plug the C gap or whatever in Mo's case. And uh, Mo can specifically work on his craft to get better day in and day out and learn from two really good pros and a guy that's definitely declining, but a guy who was a really good pro in his prime in Shaq Barrett. The other two, of course, are Jalen Phillips and Bradley Chubb, like we mentioned, who are currently recovering from season-ending injuries last year. Now, the couple of other steals that I liked were Javon Solomon to the Bills, uh, Bo Limmer in the seventh round, which was a surprise, uh, Jared Wiley to the Chiefs, and then Christian Haynes in the third round to the Seattle Seahawks. But that will wrap up today's video. Please like and subscribe if you enjoyed, and uh, please leave a five-star review if you are listening on Apple or Spotify. That's all I have for today, and I will see you next time. Love you guys.